Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Majesty King, the King receiving the participants in the work of the 146th General Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union affirms the extent of His Majesty's keenness to support the work of the General Assembly that was hosted in the Kingdom of Bahrain. More on this report. A praise and appreciation conveyed by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the guests of the Kingdom, who participated in the work of the 146th Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union. Peaceful coexistence and combating intolerance came as part of the General Assembly of the IPU, in line with the royal vision of His Majesty the King, and an indication of Bahrain's contribution to promoting the principles of peaceful coexistence throughout the various institutions that joined hands to achieve the royal vision. The success of organizing this international event was praised by His Majesty the King through the efforts of the institutions, especially the Legislative Authority, which was also prepared to make Bahrain host the largest global parliamentary event. The authorities achieved the visions of His Majesty the King and worked in the spirit of one team to ensure the success of the international gathering. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the Group Chief Executive of Standard Chartered Bank Bill Winters along with senior bank officials at the Bia Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of the Kingdom's banking and financial sector in driving comprehensive development under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He commended the service provided by Standard Chartered Bank since its establishment in Bahrain over 100 years ago and emphasized the significance of the banking and financial sector in creating quality employment, fostering investment opportunities, and advancing various sectors in line with Bahrain economic. Vision 2030. Winters expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and acknowledge his commitment in supporting the Kingdom's dynamic banking and finance industry. He wished Bahrain continued growth and prosperity. The Governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain, Rashid al Maraj, and the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamid al Malki, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued a circular regarding the official working hours during the holy month of Ramadan. According to the circular, the official working hours of the Kingdom's ministries, authorities and public institutions will be from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. throughout the holy month. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 17 of 2023 on restructuring the Water Resources Council following the approval of the Cabinet. The Council shall be chaired by the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and comprise the following members Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture, Deputy Chairman, Minister of Oil and Environment, Minister of Works, Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Minister of Sustainable Development, and Minister of Industry and Commerce. All members shall serve for a renewable four year term. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 18 of 2023 on establishing and forming the cooperation committee between the Capital Municipal Council, Municipal Councils and Government Entities based on the proposal of the Minister of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture and following the approval of the Cabinet. The committee shall be chaired by the Municipalities Minister and shall consist of the following members. Municipalities Affairs Under Secretary and the Municipalities Ministry Deputy Chairman, Under Secretary of the Ministry of Works, Agriculture and Marine Resources Affairs Under Secretary at the Municipalities Ministry, Policy, Strategies and Performance Under Secretary at the Ministry of Education, Under Secretary of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning, Chief Executive Officer of the Urban Planning and Development Authority, Under Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Vice President of the Electricity and Water Authority for Distribution and Customer Services, Chairman of the Capital Municipality Council, and Chairman of the Municipal Councils of Muharraq and Northern Southern Municipalities. The committee shall achieve compatibility in accordance with the provisions of the Municipalities Law promulgated by Decree Law 35 of 2001. It shall convene at the invitation of its Chairman or Deputy at at least once every three months or when necessary. The meeting is not valid until unless the chairman of the, of the meeting is present. It may invite under secretaries of other ministries and seek the assistance of whomever deems appropriate to carry out its work. The committee chairman shall appoint a rapporteur among the employees of the municipality's ministry who shall prepare the committee's agendas and notify the members thereof as well as write the minutes of the meetings and do other tasks assigned to them by the chairman. Edict 17 of 2009 regarding the establishment of the formation of the higher coordination committee between municipal Municipal Councils and the Capital Municipal Council and the relevant ministries was abrogated. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 19 of 2023 appointing directors at the National Center for Financial Investigation at the Ministry of Interior based on the proposal of the Minister of Interior. According to the edict, the following directors were appointed at the center. Captain Ahmed Ibrahim al Hashim, Director of Investigation and Analysis Directorate. Captain Yaagoub Farid al Miftah, Director of the Communication and International Cooperation Directorate. And Mohammed Rashid al Najm, Director of the Evaluation and Follow-up Directorate. 
His Royal Highness also issued Edict 20 of 2023 appointing directors at the IGA based on the proposal of the Minister of Interior. According to the edict, the following directors were appointed. Fahad Abdul Aziz Bahza, Director of the Governance and Institutional Structure Directorate. Ahmed Abdul Wahab Al Blushi, Director of the Development and Electronic Services and Networks Directorate. And Amnir Ambarak Al Fadl, Director of the Human and Financial Resources Directorate. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 20 of 2023 appointing Muhammad Isa Naimi as Director of the Engineering Services and Investment Directorate at the Southern Governorate based on the proposal of the Minister of Interior. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Al Bayan School, Dr. Sheikh Hamayel Atebi, on the occasion of receiving the annual Arab Woman Award 2023. Her Royal Highness praised the role of the contributions of Dr. Atebi in developing the educational process of the kingdom and praised the development witnessed in Al Bayan School and its contributions. She affirmed that this honoring proves the achievements of Bahraini women who receive an unlimited support, which enhances the status of the kingdom on a global level. She she wished her further success in serving the country. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the SCW, Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, sent a cable congratulations to the Shura Council member Dalal Zayed on being selected as a member of the IPU's committee to promote respect for international humanitarian law by the Union's Governing Council. Her Royal Highness highlighted Zayed's competence to carry out this responsibility and expressed appreciation for her efforts to actively contribute in developing legislation work and parliamentary performance in Bahrain and abroad. She wished Zayed continued success in serving the Kingdom. The National Guard Commander General, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, met with the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in the Pakistan Armed Forces, General Sahar Shamshad Mirza, at the staff headquarters in Rawalpindi on the sidelines of His Highness's visit to Pakistan. Upon His Highness's arrival, he was received by the Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff and a number of senior Pakistani military leaders, where an official reception ceremony was held for His Highness and the national anthems of the two countries were played. His Highness then inspected the Guard of Honor. The Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff welcomed His Highness's visit, which comes in light of developing bilateral military relations. His Highness hailed the high level of cooperation and military exchange between the two sides and the role of the Pakistani army in supporting regional and international security and stability. The two sides discussed a number of topics of common interest and reviewed cooperation and friendship between the two countries at various levels, especially the military. Under the patronage of National Security Advisor and Commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Major General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, a celebration was held to mark the Royal Guard Day in the presence of Commander of the Special Royal Guard Force, His Highness Colonel Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The sports activities included an individual aquathlon race for a distance of 750 meters swimming and 200 and 500 meters. 2,500 meters running, football matches, crossfit competitions, swimming competitions, tug of war, and carrying stretchers, a 400 meter relay running competition, a four kilometer walk, and archery. It also included warrior competition, map and compass and decoding, weapons installation, rowing boats, and a four kilometer cross country competition. At the end of the celebration, His Highness Sheikh Nasser crowned the winners, where His Highness Sheikh Khalid received the Royal Guard Day Cup 2023. His Highness Sheikh Nasser also honored the organizing committees and the participants, congratulating the winning team. He, the winning teams. He expressed pride in the strength and determination of the Royal Guard affiliates, wishing luck to the rest of the teams and participants in the upcoming sports activities. His Highness affirmed that holding these competitions and sports activities aims to enhance and raise the level of physical fitness, which contributes greatly to increasing military efficiency in the spirit of honest competition among the participants. He expressed his admiration for the high level of the participants in these competitions and the advanced level of various sports activities. The ceremony was attended by Deputy Commander of the Royal Guard, Major General Hamad Khalifa Naimi, and a number of Royal Guard officers. Officers.
under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Honorary President of Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, a brief organized a veterinary examination for His Highness's championship, which will be launched at the Bahrain International Endurance Village with the support of Babco, Bahrain Jewelry Center, and Techno Gym, in addition to sponsors. The veterinary examination witnessed a large participation of stables and riders with their horses passing the examination. As the examination was carried out smoothly, His Highness welcomed the participants and said that the event will be open for all and will witness fierce competition and express appreciation to the sponsors. His Highness had directed to the allocation of three cars for the first three positions in the private stables race that will be held on Saturday, in addition to the allocation of cash prizes for the winning riders from the 4th to the 20th in the amount of 32,400 Bahraini dinars. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al-Sallam, stressed the importance of the royal call to build a more just and equitable global political security and economic system and to strengthen legislative and technical cooperation in approving an international agreement to criminalize religious, sectarian and racist hate speech in all its forms. In his speech during the conclusion of the IPU, the Speaker said that the royal call represents a humanitarian goal in light of the repercussions of hatred, wars and conflicts of the world faces and it calls for promoting peaceful coexistence and inclusive societies for all. He pointed out that the remarkable success achieved by hosting the IPU Assembly has been achieved thanks to the royal patronage and his highness and he added that the continuous meetings and dialogues between parliaments reflect a very important role for legislative assemblies in implementing the goals of sustainable development and addressing challenges. The delegation of the Parliamentary Division of the Kingdom of Bahrain participating in the IPU affirmed that Bahrain recorded an honorable parliamentary and international success through the Kingdom's hosting of the largest global gathering. This came at the conclusion of the participation of the delegation of the Parliamentary Division of Bahrain headed by the Chairman of the Shura Council Ali Saleh in the IPU and the accompanying meetings. The delegation said that the Kingdom of Bahrain presents unique models of established values and principles of respect, coexistence, tolerance and brotherhood. More than 1,700 parliamentarians representing 143 countries participated in the meetings as well as international organizations and parliamentary federations. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, praised the advanced step taken by the SCW by launching the Parliamentary Guide to integrate the needs of Bahraini women in national development, which took place on the sidelines of the IPU. As Saleh praised the efforts made by the Council under the leadership of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, which resulted in more steps and initiatives that enhanced the contributions of Bahraini women. He stressed that the Parliamentary Guide to integrate the needs of Bahraini women in national development constitutes an important reference and guiding approach for the legislative authority. During the meetings of the 146th Assembly of the IPU, the Governing Council approved member of the Shura Council, Dalal Zaid, to represent the Arab group in the IPU's Committee on Respect for International Humanitarian Law. Zaid stressed the national responsibility in raising the name of the Kingdom of Bahrain in international forums and activating the directors of His Majesty the King in devoting international parliamentary cooperation and His Majesty's keen desire to strengthen Bahrain's parliamentary diplomacy through the effective contributions of the representatives of the Legislative Authority in various regional and international parliamentary forums. Under the patronage of the President of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the King Hamad University Hospital launched its national campaign for early detection of colorectal cancer. The campaign was organized in cooperation with the Ministry of Health, the RCSI, the National Committee for Control of Chronic Non-Communicable Diseases and Primary Health Care Centers. This campaign aims to highlight the importance of early detection of colorectal cancer and will include the provision of health and educational advice about these diseases. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Zaini, participated in the 49th session of the Council of Foreign Ministers of the Organization Islamic Council Member States, held in Mauritania under the patronage of its president, Mohammed Al Ghazwani, in the presence of senior officials. The ministers discussed the topics on the agenda, which include political affairs regarding the Palestinian cause and the conflicts regarding the Islamic world, and a number of current regional and international issues, in including combating terrorism and enhancing cooperation among Islamic countries in order to maintain stability and peace. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Nigerian Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Zubair Dada. During the meeting, the two sides discussed bilateral relations and the means to develop them in various fields for the interests of the two countries. They also discussed regional and international developments of common interest. 
Bahrain celebrates our Productive Family Day and on the occasion, the Minister of Social Development and Samal Asfour affirmed that the experience of productive families and entrepreneurs is a model for sustainable development. He held the support that Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the SCW provides to productive families. The Minister stated that the Ministry provided many attractive facilitations to productive families, affirming the Ministry's keenness on honing their skills. Dirasat held a ceremony to publish the book Sheikh Hamad bin Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, ruler of Bahrain 1932 to 1942, news and press coverage by the late researcher Sagar bin Abdullah Al Maouda in the presence of the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Nawaf Al Maouda. The book constitutes a qualitative effort in portraying the achievements of the late Sheikh Hamad bin Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa by analyzing what was established by the local and foreign press about his rule during that era. I'd like to thank the Rasat Center for hosting such uh, an organized inauguration ceremony uh, that is dedicated to Bahrain's uh, late ruler, uh, Sheikh uh, Hamad bin uh, Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, authored by my late uncle, uh, Sagar bin Abdullah bin Sagar al Maouda. Um, the book revolves around the news and press coverage uh, at that time. I thank His Excellency Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa and the Executive Director of Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies, Dirasat Hamad Al Abdullah, for the inauguration ceremony of the late researcher Saga bin Abdullah Al Al Maouda, launching the book of Sheikh Hamad bin Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, 1932 to 1942 news and media coverage. I thank all the attendees for being present in this special event. Under the patronage of the Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed Jumaa, the closing ceremony of the Gulf Scientific Olympiad for Mathematics and Chemistry was held, which was organized by the Arab Bureau of Education for Gulf States in cooperation with the Ministry of Education in the presence of GCC undersecretaries of the Education Ministries. The Minister affirmed Bahrain's pride in hosting the event in its ninth edition, with, which aimed to stimulating students' abilities in these two fields and preparing them to achieve advanced results in the International Olympiad. He stressed the keenness of the Ministry to develop school curricula and motivate students to choose scientific and technical specialization. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhr, met with the Indian Minister of Commerce and Industry, Piyush Goyal, within the framework of his official visit to India. They reviewed the historical relations between the two friendly countries and praised the advanced level of bilateral ties, which contributed to enriching mutual visits, which have a role in advancing bilateral economic development. The Minister noted the keenness of the two friendly countries to continue developing joint relations, highlighting the importance of discussing new opportunities for cooperation. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Interior for Nationality, Passports and Residence Affairs, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdul Rahman Al Khalifa, inaugurated the exhibition on the occasion of the launch of the electronic passport for the Kingdom of Bahrain, which will last until the 19th of March. This national project aims to provide more facilities to citizens, raise the quality of services, and achieve the national strategy for comprehensive digital transformation. Over the course of five days, the organizers of the exhibition will review the advantages of the electronic passport and what it contains of modern security features and high technology that will contribute to facilitating the procedure of Bahrain travelers in various airports around the world. Bahrain International Airport was named as the world's best airport for baggage delivery and won the award for the best airport staff in Middle East at the World Airport Awards held in 2023 Passenger Terminal Expo in Amsterdam. Gulf Air Group Chairman Zaid Zayani and Bahrain Airport Company CEO Mohamed Al Bin Falah accepted the awards on the airport's behalf at the presentation ceremony. The World Airport Awards are the most prestigious awards for the airport industry, voted by customers in the largest annual global airport customer satisfaction survey. The award adds to the series of achievements of the Kingdom of Bahrain and enhances its status on the regional and global levels. Zayani praised this international appreciation, which reflects the commitment of the kingdom to deliver the best experience for travelers. The BCCI chairman, Samir Nas, participated in the launch of the Arab-French Summit of the Chambers of Commerce in Paris, which is being held this year under the auspices of the French president. The chairman confirmed that the Arab world is witnessing transformational development visions at various levels, which calls for formulating policies that strengthen Arab economic relations. He said that the growing economic ties between Arab business communities and their French counterparts contributed to opening broader horizons for joint cooperation in various fields, noting that the Union of Arab Chambers attaches to developing joint relations with the French business sector. 
The Urban Planning and Development Authority held a workshop on the updating regulatory requirements and urbanization. The holding of this workshop comes based on the importance of community partnership between the authority and the private sector. During the opening of the workshop, the CEO of the authority, Engineer Ahmed Al Khayyat, affirmed that the project regulatory requirements for construction comes to meet the aspirations of citizens, residents, and investors, and to serve the urban sector in the kingdom. The chairman of the Bahrain Engineering Offices Society, Engineer Mazen Al Amran, affirmed that the regulatory requirements for constructive have a fundamental role in advancing the comprehensive development and attracting investments in the urban sector from inside and outside the kingdom.